Hello everyone and welcome to today's lecture. So far we have been coloring graphs in various ways. We have been coloring vertices and we have been coloring faces of plain graphs, but this might risk leaving the edges sad, so in order not to leave them out we will also color edges. Coloring edges in a graph is an interesting problem in itself and uh, we will see how it ties nicely to previous ideas that we have discussed about graphs. Also, it has applications in scheduling and in fiber optic communications that I will leave to you to explore further. So uh, the idea is simply that given a graph, we want to color edges uh, in different colors. The precise definition is that we call a graph K edge colorable or K colorable E if its edges can be colored with K colors so that no adjacent edges have the same color. Remember for two edges being adjacent, uh, what it means is that they should attach, so to speak, to the same vertex. So in this case, if I were to color the edges, I have to color this one in a different color from this one. And uh, of course, the, for this particular, well, it's not a graph yet because I'm missing vertices, but I make it into a graph. And it's easy to see that this graph is two edge colorable, um, but also it's 17 edge colorable just by not using the remaining 15 colors. So the smallest possible number of colors that you can use is called the chromatic index and is denoted by chi prime of G. Notice this prime here. And do not confuse this with the chromatic number chi of g, which is the same concept but for coloring the vertices rather than the edges. So for example, if we have this graph, then uh, in this case, chi of g is three. So for coloring the vertices, now chi is for vertices. For coloring the vertices, I definitely need three colors because I have a complete three graph here. Uh, but then if I color, say, this vertex red, this vertex blue, and this vertex green, then for instance, I can use green for all these other vertices. So three colors is also enough. But to color the edges, well, I can look for a certain feature. So this vertex has degree five uh, and five edges coming into this vertex must have different colors. And in this case, it's enough with five colors. So chi prime is five because I can color the edges. Maybe this one is red, this one is green and so on. And this uh, edge into the left can have any color as those edges to the right. So as opposed to vertex colorings, the degree is of quite some help for edge colorings. And as we have seen, uh, we cannot do with fewer colors for the edges than the degree of the highest vertex. The reason is because at this highest vertex, uh, this number of edges will meet and they will all have to have different colors. So theoretically, you can imagine graphs uh, having increasingly high um, num high chi prime g, increasingly high chromatic index. And quite surprisingly, for simple graphs, this doesn't really happen. So for a simple graph where the highest vertex degree is delta, then chi prime of g is either equal to delta or at the worst it's equal to delta plus one. So at most we will need one color more than the degree of the highest vertex. This was proved by Witzing in 1964. The proof of this theorem is outside the scope of this course so we will not deal with it specifically. But let's look at a few examples. So let's look at the cycle graph Cn. So for Cn, the highest vertex degree is 2. In fact, all vertices have degree 2. So let's look at the example of C6. And now, just like with the 
uh, vertices, I can color the edges, every other one red, every other one black, and two colors are enough. Uh, but if I had had an odd number of vertices, so now I have C7, then in the end I will need a third color in the same way that we discussed for vertices, so uh, this uh, will be three edge colorable. So to summarize, if n is even, the number of colors required for the edges, the chromatic index, is equal to the highest degree, uh, which is 2. And if n is odd, then we are equal to delta plus 1. So both cases that are advertised by Witzing's theorem occur already for simple graphs. For wheel graphs with at least n equals uh, 4, then the highest vertex degree is n minus 1 because it's the vertex in the middle that attaches to all other vertices. And so this is w5. So I will definitely need four different colors for these edges, but then this is enough because I have a cycle and for n greater than or equal to 4, I will uh, have, um, well, I will have uh, at least four, uh, at least three colors already used for the edges going to the center, so that will not change on the cycle. So in this case, the chromatic index is n minus one. An important class of graphs is, of course, uh, that of complete graphs, and for that we will prove independently of Witzing's theorem that. Uh, the chromatic index of a complete graph with an odd number of vertices is equal to n, where n is the number of vertices, and if n is even, it's equal to n minus 1. So recall that for a complete uh, graph, delta, the highest vertex degree, is equal to n minus 1. So again, we see both cases of Witzing's theorem. But we will not use Witzing's theorem to prove this theorem. We will prove this theorem directly. So let's start with the case of odd number of vertices. So how do you usually draw the uh, complete graph on n vertices? You draw a regular n-gon, like a pentagon if it's k5, and then you add the remaining edges inside the n-gon. So you can always color the edges of the n-gon in n colors. So first we're going to show that n colors are in fact enough. Uh, and then we'll show that you actually need n colors. So remember the statement that the chromatic index um, is equal to n says two things. It says that it is possible to color uh, the graph with n colors for the edges, and it's impossible to color it with fewer colors. So let's first show that it's possible. Well, since we have n colors, we can use our n colors to color the edges of uh, the n-gon. And then, as it turns out, for odd complete graphs, when you draw the n-gon as regularly, meaning that all angles are uh, equal, this has no uh, graph theoretic consequence, but for the drawing, it will turn out that each interior edge will be parallel to an edge of the polygon that's not adjacent to it. So let me try to illustrate this, even though I am not a great artist when it comes to regular n-gons. But here we draw first the polygon and then we color the outer edges using five different colors, red, blue, black, let's say yellow and pink. And then for the edges inside, so I will have one edge that goes between these vertices, and that is parallel to this vertex. This is a feature of the um, complete graph Kn with n odd, so I color it in the same color. And that's okay because this edge is not going to be adjacent with this edge. And I continue doing that, so this one is parallel to the red one, this one is parallel to the blue one, and uh, this one is parallel to the pink one, 
and finally this one is parallel to the black one. So uh, I will not prove the statement that these inner edges will always be parallel if I draw the outer edge, if the outer edge is in a regular angle, but uh, you can look into that if you want. In any case, uh, we have we can use the same end colors we used for the outer end gone for the inner edges. And so it's enough in this case with five colors to color the edges of uh, Km. Again, Witzing's theorem would have implied that, but since we haven't proved Witzing's theorem, I'm not going to use it. So to show that n colors are in fact necessary, assume you can do with fewer colors. So assume that n minus one colors are enough. You certainly know that you cannot have fewer than n minus one colors because the vertex degree is n minus one. So you know for sure you're going to need at least n minus one. Now we're going to show that n minus one is in fact not enough. If it were, then some color will have to be used for just over n half edges. Why is that? Pause and think. The answer is the pigeonhole principle. So in the uh, complete graph, you have n times n minus 1 divided by 2 edges. So if you are using n minus 1 colors, then at least this number divided by n minus 1 color um, edges will be colored in the same color. And this will not be an integer, so you take the smallest integer greater than or equal to it, and that is precisely by cancelling, that's precisely n half. So, like so. And uh, since n is odd, we in fact know that this number is n plus 1, which is even, divided by 2. So we're going to need at least this many uh, edges colored by the same color. But this is not possible. Why is that? Because the maximal number of edges is n minus 1 half. Because Look at Kn. Kn has an n cycle, the outer n gon, if you please. And so this n cycle, every other color of it will have to, uh, th that's the maximum amount of times I can use the same color. I can use it for every second edge of the uh, maximal vertex, um, the maximal cycle. And then every other edge, every edge that is not in this cycle, will be adjacent to one of the uh, edges in this cycle. So, so let me illustrate this with, again, n equals to 5, just to give you an idea. So if I look at my outer cycle, I can only color every other color red, and then I have to even stop here because uh, the last edge will have to be a different color. But so uh, this is n minus one half uh, times that I have used the color red because n is equal to five. And now any edge that is not in the cycle will touch upon a vertex that has a red edge coming into it. And that is why I cannot use red for more edges and that is why any color can maximally be used for n minus one half edges. So it's impossible that I can use the same color for n plus one half edges. That is why n minus one colors cannot be enough. So that is the odd case. Now let's look at the even case. We need to show in this case that n minus one colors uh, are enough. So how do you get Kn, you get it from Kn minus 1 by adding a vertex and connect it to all the vertices of Kn minus 1. And this, so I have here Kn minus 1, and I get my new graph by adding this nth edge and connecting it to my Kn minus 1 here to some vertex. So, sorry, the nth vertex and connecting it to every possible vertex. So now this vertex here has degree n minus 2 in k n minus 1. So there are n minus 1 uh, 
vertices in total in this graph, and so there are n minus 2 edges coming into this vertex from the kn minus 1 graph. So I have one color available of my n minus 1 colors to color this additional edge with. And uh, I can do this, um, I can color this edge with that color, and this way all the n minus 1 edges here will be differently colors because differently colored because by the structure of the complete graph I will have different colors available at different vertices of k n minus 1. So in the end I can use that color to color k n minus uh, to color the uh, extra edges and I don't need more than n minus 1 colors. And again it's I cannot do with less than n minus 1 colors because that's the degree of uh, any vertex in Kn. So this shows that the chromatic index of Kn is n for odd n at least 3 and n minus 1 for even 